of course, what people also want to know is, what do you think about Jetpack Compose? So we are back at Android now. Jetpack Compose, the new declarative UI framework on Android. Uh, first of all, what do you think about this? Do you think it's the future? And also what people really want to know is, is XML still relevant or is all the XML knowledge now immediately uh, pointless, useless? So yeah, I've used Jetpack Compose now in multiple projects and I enjoy it much more than building apps with XML because you just have much more freedom. You just simple things like giving giving some views a border is just so much more easy now. You don't need to create any drawable resources or whatever. Um, so that is definitely a big fun factor that, that improved. In terms of is it the future? I also think so, because if we take a look at other technologies at web development, iOS development, they all use the same approach that Big Compose uses. And there must be a reason for that, if all these popular technologies use that. I think it will take time though. So of course it's very new, it, it just got stable. And until companies actually adapt to that, um, it takes time. They can't just press a big red button and switch their code base from XML to Jetpack Compose. It just won't happen because there's always that trade-off for companies. It's spending money for changing code and improving it or spending money to implement more features for their app that actually the users have something from that brings them direct money. And I think, yeah, it will be the future, but it will take time. And if I make a new app nowadays, I will probably use Jetpack Compose for that. Yeah, my little hobby project I started recently, I also made in Compose and I really enjoy it. Once you get the hang of it and understand how a state is managed and stuff like that. But it's it's kind of addictive to write layouts like this. Of course, some stuff is more more difficult than with the old constraint layout where you could just drag and drop um, yeah. the views into place. Um, but it's still fun. It makes bugs much less common in my opinion because with XML you had you had to manage the state of these views yourself and you often had two sources of truth, the state that's internal to the viewer, like a checkbox and the, the state you have in your view model, for example, for the checkbox. But in Compose, it's different. If the you have to pass a value if the checkbox is checked or not. And if you don't pass this value, then clicking it won't make anything happen. And this way you have a single source of truth. You know that if the checkbox is checked, then the corresponding Boolean value that feeds this checkbox, which probably comes from your view model, also has the same value. So you have one single source of truth, which makes bugs less common. Um, one thing about, I also agree that it will take time before XML is, is completely gone because there's so much legacy code now with XML in yeah. it. Um, but you also have to keep in mind that you that they are interoperable. You can use composables in normal XML views and the other way around as well. So even companies who have a ton of XML code will probably start using Jetpack Compose pretty yeah. much immediately. Most of them for newer for newer uh, screens, for example, just to start getting into it. Well, there's still some things that Jetpack Compose doesn't offer yet that are very easy with XML. For example, diff util animations. Yeah, or overshoot scrolling animations is also not there yet, mm, like in Recycler yeah. Viewer. Or your shared element transitions. But no question, they will start uh, adding this stuff. That would come, really definitely, soon. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so as I said, I uh, enjoy JPEG Compose as well. It takes a bit of time to uh, wrap your head around it when you start a good source <clears throat> to get started. You have a tutorial series about it, right? Mm, yes. So people can check this out. I will put this into uh, the show notes. 